What is up guys, Insensei here, YouTube channel dedicated specifically to beginner and intermediate players to help them get better at the game. So one thing that seems to be increasingly more important as I play this game is uh, counting and how to figure out if you're ahead or if you're behind. If I think I'm ahead, but I'm actually behind, then I'll be playing timidly and I'll be playing passively when I should be like trying to make more points. Likewise, if I think I'm behind and I'm actually ahead, I could ruin my victory by doing something stupid and getting captured. So I tried to dig up some stuff on really how to count, and want to pass that on to you with a little bit of a uh, personal training strategy included. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the real hang-up that I think is the reason most people don't try to count when they're beginner and intermediate players is because there's really no feedback as to whether you've done it right during your games. So the question is, how do we get instant feedback for our counting guesses? Answer, like always, computers. So KGS has a score estimator, which when you click it, will take whatever move the game is currently at and will estimate the score. This is really useful um, I've never done it really in-game, but it's a very, very useful tool. And this can be applied to any game. It doesn't have to be a game that you're playing. You could click on a random game in KGS, click the score estimator at any point during that game, and it'll give you the current score. So I think, what better way to use that than to practice counting? Essentially what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to download. I'm just going to go to KGS, find a bunch of active games, and download them and just like save them as an SGF file or whatever. Then I'm going to go in those games and practice my score estimating skills. I'll, within the first 30 to 50 moves, make sort of a general judgment about who's winning and what the losing side needs to do to win. And then sort of towards the end, I will get, I'll try to practice more exact counting and figure out exactly how little or how much this person has won by. And then I'll supplement it with the score estimator and see how close or how far I got to the actual situation. Okay, I just went on KGS and downloaded like 10 games. So something you want to try to keep in mind is you want to play games with a fair amount of moves uh, that have been played. I'd say like 115 up is like a good number. And actually when you go to the open games tab in KGS, uh, you can actually see the move that it is on. Actually, let me show you. Um, so... Want to go to KGS, play on KGS, right? And we go to active games right here. See this column? This is the, this is the move number. And so the other thing you want to do is you want to try to pick games around your skill level. Reason being, those are the sort of strategies and moves that you would probably get into. Like because so I'm like a six Q right now on KGS. So if I look at games that are around a 5 to 7 Q, those are more likely to be situations that I'm going to be in on personally. And those are patterns that I'm going to see most likely. And so things won't be too over my head or too basic. And so the counting will be a little bit more applicable and more realistic to the games that I would normally be. So once you've got a reasonable set of games that <clears throat> have a decent number of moves played and are around your skill level, time to start practicing counting. So let's see. Let us go like 30 moves in. Uh, sure, okay. So let's look at it right now. Um, the thing is, there's not a like, they don't make a lot of Moyo, they're just sort of fighting. <laughs> Which is a little tough, uh, but we can see that uh, Black has some definite points here and here, and just eyeballing it, that looks like it's about 18, I guess, points, 15 to 18 points. White, however, uh, depending on what happens around here, let's say that White grabs this corner. So White's one corner is about potentially equal to well, white's corner in this part is about equal or more than black's two areas right here. 
So if we were to like freeze frame this game right now, we would see that black territorially is behind. And coupled with white's nice little influence has, I would say that white's better in this position. As long as like this white group doesn't get captured if white can connect here. And that's sort of how you want to count in the beginning of the game. You don't want to like get exact numbers. You want to sort of get a feel for like how big one area is versus another area. So we can see that this area for white is a little bit bigger than this corner for black. And then coupled with this few points that white is getting, um, and basically the three points that black is getting here, it puts white a little bit ahead of black. And since white has influence where black doesn't, I would say white's ahead in this level of the game. So now let's keep going. Uh... Okay. Let's go a little bit forward, and here we are. So, we see that Black basically ripped away all of that territory that we were talking about. Um, and actually made a lot in this corner. Uh, what did White get? He actually captured three stones, too. So... Black definitely is doing better now. However, white seems to have better potential over here. Um, got really nice influence going on, as well as a good stone in the corner, and can probably profit a lot from this, and this black group is still really, really weak. Um, so just eyeballing it right now, so we can see that this white area is about as big as this black area, Right, 2, 4, 12, 15, 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, yeah. A little bit bigger than this black corner even. So this exchange made more points for white than black because of this white stone right here. As it stands right now. Um, so that coupled with the fact that white is still getting influence from this, I would put white ahead um, in this game right now. And if you're wondering why I haven't used a score estimator yet, it's because it, the score estimator sometimes does badly when things aren't well defined yet. So, I mean, we can take a look, right? <laughs> it's saying white's going to win by 101.5, which, I mean, it's ludicrous. Black is going to do something around here. Um, but we can get some useful information on that, because, like, black doesn't have any stones in this part of the board. Black completely neglected this part of the board, and tried to go for some immediate benefit, but white seems to be very skilled in building influence and getting good potential. Um, so watching other games and sort of going every 20 moves or so and figuring out where the game is at, I think can really help you figure out where you're at during your own games. Um, so if I were to say, like, what should black do right now? It's pretty tough. I would... Mm, the thing is, trying to make this group live could really easily allow white to profit. Like, if, if black tries to, like, make this group survive, white can just follow him out this way and get all the side. So I might try to... I would probably just try to make some territory on the side and then bleed out and then try to connect up with this group. But honestly, the game's looking pretty... I think it's looking pretty bad for black right now. But let's see what happens. So, yeah, black needs to do something. Uh... So white's just going to take his points. Press black down. Okay. And now black's going to try to make his group live. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, see? see? Black needed that group to live, except now white's getting all of this. Unless black can somehow... White's being very passive right now. Well, there is the monkey jump there, so... Except black made an eye now. Wow, white is being really passive. Oh my gosh.
White could have killed him. All I had to do was play here. <laughs> and black would have... Well, actually, now that he's connected, never mind. That's a lie. Okay, so... <laughs> that was a little disappointing. White should have gotten this entire left-hand side. Oh my god. It's fine. Okay, so now let's like try to do comparative counting, right? Our, our go-to method. This is probably looks to be about as big as this. And now we can probably even spend a few minutes like counting, right? So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, so that's like 18. And then once you start counting, you can figure out like in your brain, you'll see blocks of a certain size and it'll be like, oh, that's 18. Uh, so this is like, I'll make it 16 because of these two. So 16, 22, 23, right? 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So it's about the same. So this about equals this. Um, this. So now black's only other sources of territory are this one, this one, and this one. And this one. White's is here and here. So white's middle group here, plus what he might be getting on the side, is about as big as this plus this, I think. So let's count, right? 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. This is like 30. So this plus this is 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 45, 6, 7, 8, 29. We'll say 30. Yeah, so that comparative counting actually worked, right? So this was about as big as this plus this. And so we used up about all of white's stuff. So black has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 more points. Um, we can say that this area probably evens out this bottom area once everything is over, but what white needs to do right now is play a big reducing move somewhere over here. Because we can see that the game now is really close from this counting, right? Which means endgame is like super important. So this is not sente for black, for white. So white needs to use that time to make some heavy reductions. And actually, we can probably consult the score estimator and see what we're doing. And, lo and behold, uh, we have black winning by five and a half, which is about what we estimated. We said it was about pretty even, but black is a little bit ahead and white needs to reduce. So that's actually working out pretty well. Um, and that's why the score estimator is so good, because you can go through the game and sort of get feedback as to like how good your judgment is about a game. Uh, so let's see. See, this isn't... this isn't... well, I guess that's Sente. Okay. Uh... That wasn't Sente. What are you guys doing? See, White's not playing the way White should be. White is trying to kill things. White is only behind by, like, six points right now. If White played a, the monkey jump here, that rips, like, eight points away. This is a Sente move for White, so Black has to play here. Uh, white has other sente moves that can just reduce black and make points for him, like this one right here. That's pretty big. So we can see that white must not be counting, because if white was counting, they would be playing very, very differently. Instead, white, instead white's going for one point, right? When white should have been trying to make this more points, and now black just ripped like three points away from white. Look at that. And black got even more points. Now let's check the score. I would say black's more ahead now. Yeah, black gained a point. So black, black that endgame was good for black. Now white's one more point behind in trying to win this. Uh, and another great move by black. Pressing white down. Getting into white's middle. Which is exactly what he should be doing. Okay, white played that point. That was good. I would still say that wasn't Sente. But I guess it you need to think of a Sente play before going back and playing that. Now let's look at the score. Yeah, black by nine and a half. Black is using his Sente moves to take huge advantage and reduce white. And now the gap is even bigger. And black so and now black fixed his monkey jump. So now there's actually no way white can win. Uh, oh, well, that was actually, that was interesting.
So that was somehow a reduction. I don't get it, but okay. Um, what was that? What the heck? Huh. That was weird. I guess Black should have played one point lower. Anyways. So now we see some more reducing moves. More reducing moves. Black's keeping keeping Sente, which is good. Grabbed another point. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why White did that. Sorry. Uh, we've got a co-fight. Well, what's the score? Okay, so now let's like try our count again, but not the score estimator. Uh, let's see what we got. So this corner is about as big as... Uh, this looks about the size of this plus this plus this. Right? Uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. It's like 21. 5, 10, 21. Yeah. So one, two, three, about equals this. And so now we've got, what else? So actually white is still ahead from this exchange because white does have, white got this reduction off. Even though he lost Sente, he somehow was able to reduce black by like eight points over here. Um, And so I would say this puts white ahead by like, I wanna say like five or six points. Oh. Not as much as I thought. So, black is still in the lead by two and a half. So we should have actually tried to count a little bit more. Um, we should have tried to count a little bit more well. Um, so I guess uh, these points really do add up. This center is actually pretty sizable. Also, we have to take into account captures, right? Um, black has five more captures than white, which was the reason. I was going strictly for territory. I forgot about the captures. So that's another thing you have to remember. So, at this point, that's when I stopped, um, that's when I saved the game. The game isn't actually over yet. But just from what we can see right now, uh, White definitely lost. And we know that the reason White lost is back when we counted and we said, oh, like, White, Black is ahead by a few points. But if White plays a bunch of reducing moves, White can catch up. White had a bunch of really inefficient moves right in this area. And this was probably where white went wrong, because none of these were necessary. Like, this one point here doesn't really mean anything. It, like, take that point and then compare it with that, right, is worth a lot more. Or even just doing this right away is huge. Right? That was huge, and you end in Sente. And then you can probably even, then you can play this move, right? Then you can play this move. Then you can probably come back here. And so now let's say white did that exchange instead, and then we look at the score. Now white's ahead by 11 and a half. It's crazy. How many, how much a difference, like, a little bit of reading before you, like, figure out how you're going to wrap up a game can make. So if White made those series of Sente plays in that point, instead of taking that one co Atari thing, he would have won by 11.5 points. I mean, if Black, you know, if everything panned out the way this was supposed to. Because of those few little moves that he was able to get the initiative for. So initiative in the end game is huge, and practicing your counting seems to really be able to help with that. Um, this is actually really beneficial because you, you could sort of see how play around with moves and how moves change the score of the game using the auto score and just sort of using your general intuition. So, uh, that's sort of how I would go about practicing counting. And then the idea is to get to the point where you can just do this all in your head really fast and then make better judgments about the game as a result. Um, so I'm going to try to keep practicing this and do this more in my games and see how it works out. Um, I hope this has helped you. It has definitely helped me. And I cannot wait to do some more Blitz this Thursday. Um, hope you guys have a really fun time playing the game, playing your go. And I will see you on the grid.